under my presidency, we'll accomplish a complete American energy independence. Complete. And we're going to combat climate change with more clean, renewable energy jobs. She declared that we've got to move away from coal and all of the other fossil fuels. That's a quote. I want to see us deploy a half a billion more solar panels by the end of my first term. America's incredible energy potential remains untapped. It's totally self-inflicted. It's a wound, and it's a wound that we have to heal. The U.S. energy market is changing fast. Fossil fuels, of course, still account for most of what we use, but imports are falling and renewables are rapidly on the rise. While the candidates debate policy, Deb and I have been traveling the country and visiting towns where renewable projects are taking root. We are in Spurville, Spurville, Kansas. In fact, I asked the mayor, how do you pronounce this town? He said Spearville, but I heard him say Spurville. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we came here to see the contrast of the old town and the new wind turbines, which are driving the economy here. Electricity from wind has more than doubled over the past five years in the United States. Thanks to a state incentive program, Kansas is now one of the biggest producers of wind energy in the country. Um, my impression is that it's pretty much a strong wind. This is unusually calm for Kansas, right? That's correct. Out here, it's anything under 20 mile an hour. Wind is a breeze. The wind turbines generate electricity and it ships all of it back east. Yeah. Uh, we uh. keep none out here. <laughs> we get nothing. So. so 10 years ago, if we were standing here, would it be just, just um, prairie or yeah. just farmland? Well, just farmland. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. There's been people that come, come back that's been gone for 20 years, and when they yeah. come back, they just can't believe the difference it looks. Yeah. You've been in Spearville for a long time, right? This is that's your correct. home. That's correct. This is my home. This is where I grew up. Yes. And what was it like when the idea was presented to people who'd been from a farming economy of having these beautiful, space-age, somewhat weird things in the middle of their farmland? I believe the biggest part of it was they could see a way of income, yeah. generating income. You know, they don't take up that much space. They farm right around them. It just goes with the city of Spurville. That Love's truck might be worth taking a picture of. Love's is the, the largest truck stop operator in the United States. They're our customer. So our fuels, our fuels, are going into Love's truck stops nationwide, whereby truckers, whereby truckers are burning biodiesel as they travel the roads of America. That, that's, a, that's, a kind of a, that's kind of a big story. The renewable fuel market expanded here in the U.S. after Congress passed the Renewable Fuel Standard in 2005. It required all transportation fuel sold in the U.S. to contain a minimum volume of renewable fuel, like the kind made here at Hero BX. Erie isn't ideal for solar or wind, but it's great for biofuel. The plant can bring in biorefuse from nearby big cities and ship out its fuel to the whole eastern corridor. Hello. Um, so this is our pre-treatment facility down here. Um, in here, we bring in raw feedstocks, used cooking oils, animal fats. This is the centrifuge that's used to separate the water um, that we're adding in that pulls out metals and other contaminants. Right now, through this, we're running at roughly 800 pounds a minute or about 110 to 120 gallons per minute through the centrifuge. Yeah, I, I think um, certainly from a local perspective, the, the plant has, got, has gotten a lot of attention. You know, we have 55 employees, native Erie personnel right here. I think when people get behind the gates here, see what we do and see all the people and the consumers and businesses that we reach from here, they are rather surprised, uh, particularly where Erie has been historically known as an industrial town. The fact that we're creating green jobs and uh, creating new emerging energy for the United States and the world, they, they are surprised. It's a great story. Blinding. 
That's way better. <laughs> okay. Nearly half the country's solar power comes from California. Calcom Solar is one of a handful of companies operating in the Central Valley, and they specialize in solar arrays for farmers who need more and more energy for things like sophisticated irrigation systems. I think a lot of the changes that have happened in the last 10 years within the renewable power sector has been the acceptance of solar. 10 years ago, it was considered to be something very green, very, very left wing, very uh, alternative. And today it's much more mainstream. You have a very conservative group within the Central Valley who sees the economic benefit of it that is beginning to not just embrace it, but, but gobble it up for its use uh, and for their benefit. In nearby Fresno, California, city managers took a different approach. They started to look into not just how to create more renewable energy, but how to lower energy usage as a whole. So back in the 20s and 30s, homes were relatively small. Typically they were 900 to maybe 13, 1400 square feet. Now what we find is people want bigger homes north of 2,000 square feet, easy. If a home was built in the 90s and it was a very large house, chances are that thing is a, is a pretty much of an energy hog. Okay, um, my name is Joseph Oldham. Uh, formerly, I was the sustainability manager for the city of Fresno, and I did that from 2008 through uh, 2013. Fresno had, and I believe still does, one of the highest uh, per capita residential electricity consumption rates of any city in pg and &E's service territory. But over the last few years, we've been making some real progress in reducing that. Oldham set up a plan, first to improve the efficiency of structures and then to add renewables. The city offered home energy audits and pointed out leaks, broken ducts, bad insulation. This work lowered the city's total energy use by about 18 percent, despite its growing population. So efficiency first, renewables second. You know, if we're fortunate by uh, 20, I don't know, 2020, we may hit that 30% mark or maybe even go beyond it. So that's a lot of money recirculating in our community in a different way, and that'll help our local economy. During our travels, Deb and I have found that coexisting with the struggle over national energy policy, America is already full of hundreds and thousands of local energy policies. Individuals are seizing opportunities created by state or federal incentives, and many are simply seizing problems as entrepreneurs. Despite the rancor and paralysis at the national level, people from Fresno to Erie to Spearville and beyond are finding ways to progress.